The third one is called the Data Dictionary Revisions uh, external module. And what this does is this is really nice because it allows you to take a project that's in production and anytime you change that project, it allows you to go back and compare the changes you've made uh, through the different revisions that you've had. Um, but it only works for, for projects that are in production. So I have this other project that's same thing, it's the uh, demographics uh, form and we're in, pr we're in production. Uh, let me enter draft mode. Um, so, so I don't know if everybody's familiar, when you go into production, you can't make changes uh, like you do normally. You have to enter draft mode, make your changes, and then submit your changes for review. And if they're simple changes, like you've added a field, um, it usually automatically just updates for you, it submits the changes and approves them. But if you do something where you have a, um, like a drop down list here, if you change one of these values, so instead of this being you know American Indian, you say Native American, and it still has the same code, and you submit that change, um, that will usually go to Terrier, one of us, and we have to approve it because sometimes somebody will change. They'll say like, well, I don't want this to be Asian anymore. I want to change that to white because that's you know I want that to be moved up to the front, and people will see it right away not realizing that if they have data that has a one in it, it's coded for Asian. And then when they make the change, now anytime somebody puts a one, it's white. And so half their data is one for Asian and the rest of their data is one for white. And so Terry and I and Colleen will get flagged uh, and we'll see this. And if we see something like that, we'll send it back to the person and we won't approve the changes. And uh, REDCap kind of looks out for everybody. So if there, there are certain things that REDCap will see that it will send for approval instead of approving it automatically. So, and once you're done, uh, you would just go back to your, um, you wouldn't be, you would go back to the production mode and you would have to enter draft mode again to make the changes. So this dictionary revisions module is, it's fairly simple. All you do, once it's enabled, there's no configuration for it at all. And the documentation is very sparse. Essentially, all you have to do is have, you have to have submitted changes to your dictionary at least once to have a revision. So right now, if I clicked on it, there wouldn't be any revisions. I mean, there might be. Uh, so this is technically two revisions, even though I didn't do anything, um, even though I didn't change anything. So let's go to the designer, and I'll make some changes. So let's say instead of address, let's say I want to break this up and I want to add street. And city. So let's say I added those and I got rid of this one. And then let's say I went down here for gender and I added the new um, not reported. Now I'll go back up to submit my changes. And then if I go to my revisions You'll see here that this is the, this is when I moved it to production, this was what we just checked out. And so if we go from here to here, you would select at least two, or I guess two only. Um, and it shows you here which fields were added. So anything that was new is in green. Uh, any field that was changed is in yellow. Uh, so here it shows you in the grayed out uh, values down here. It used to be zero for female, one for male. Now it's zero for female, one for male, and 99 for not reported. And then down here, the red is the, the field that we uh, deleted. 
So you would be able to compare your two revisions um, side by side. And if there's any other changes that were made throughout that. Uh, I believe it also works for uh, not only, let me see, not just adding or uh, deleting, but I think if we went through here and changed this, like the actual um, formatting, so let's say this date of birth now, we wanted it to be month, date, year. I think if we do that, it should show us the change as well. And you can see here this, it shows me that I changed the, valid te the text validation from, from year, month, and day to month, day, and year. So if you add any of these, uh, so if you add any of the changes, if you add a field note, uh, I believe anything that you change here, if you change the field label or the type uh, or the section header, any of these changes that you make, it's going to track uh, min, max, whether you have branching logic, if it's required, if you have alignment, the change the alignment, uh, the question number for the survey, if it's in a matrix group or a ranking or a field annotation, any of these will show up in yellow if you change them. So I figure this would be a, a useful tool for somebody who's making revisions and uh, wants to see um, something, you know, wants to see how their data has changed. And, and you also are able to go back and kind of see what it used to be. So if we went, um, so let me go back to the designer and So if we change this to DOB and we change this back to, let's say we wanted this to be day, um, I'll say this is right horizontal. Now we can compare the what, what I just did to what what, what it was before here and you see that I've changed a couple of things here um, but you can also see how it was a couple of revisions ago and so right here you see that this had no value um, it started out with date as year month and day so you'd be able to backtrack and see what it was um, before and you can even see when it was moved production and the current revision you can see all of the changes together so now if I show you this it has the changes I made first and now it has all the data uh, data birth field changes that I made as well so it's a nice little running tally to see the the evolution of your project and if you ever need to ever need to revert back to something uh, if you've made a mistake and you know if you've changed one of these codes uh, you, and you made a mistake you can always go back so if we did something like um, like we were talking about, if we change the value from white to Asian uh, in the race. So if we did like, and if you didn't have any data in this, uh, project like I have right now, it would probably just automatically submit anything because there's no risk of you losing data. It's only when you start entering data that REDCap will flag it and, and send it to us for approval. So if we go and we check out the, the initial um, production version versus the one we have now, you'll see that you can flag that this one now says Caucasian and it used to say Asian and this used to say this is Asian now and this used to be white. So if something happens down the road and you're able to go back and see that something has changed, um, you might be able to figure out what you need to change it back to if, you, if you've made a mistake um, or if there's something you, you've changed and you don't like it and you want to change it back. You, you have a running record of, of your project. Um, Manual. Yes. So, so I've never, 
uh, done this before or uh, seen anything that kind of <clears throat> hit me like this when we've done these presentations. But I do, you know, we do have the ability to automatically stick up this on all projects. I think I'd like to do that. Um, yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Really nice. This would be a really nice feature for people to be able, and us, to be able to go back and see what kind of changes have been made. I frequently, uh, after I approve a change, you know, think, oh, I wonder what I just did. <laughs> and it would be nice to be able to be sure that I could go back and look and see what those changes were. So I'm thinking so that both of you who are on the call, if you start seeing this external module show up by default and the data dictionary revision showing up in your menu, uh, it's because we've enabled it on all the projects by default. And boy, this is just really a powerful tool. I think I'm going to uh, do that right now, unless you know anybody sees a reason not to. <laughs> no. No, I, yeah, I think it'd be great. Yeah, I do too. Especially with oh. this, uh, you know, the the project field that gets deleted because we have a lot of requests for people who are like, oh, I just accidentally deleted this field and, and they don't have a snapshot of their dictionary or, you know, any of their old uh, fields or any of the uh, XML or CSV files. And so them trying to figure out which field got deleted or however, we usually we go to the test site and grab it and pull it back in, but this would be nice for them to see that, oh, it's this, this demographics field got deleted and, and all of the values that they need to put back in to get it to where it needed to be. Okay, so uh, for those who are on the call, so I just enabled it, so and I just looked at another project, and sure enough, it shows up right away now, so it's going to show up on all projects. So for those of you who are, what, the, the thing that occurred to me was permission. You know, I don't, you know, not everybody needs to really be involved with this, so I mean, I, I to point out if you look at permissions for a user, I don't know if you've ever looked at this before, but uh, they're underneath on the right-hand side. On the right-hand side, it lists all of your uh, instruments. Yeah, good, thanks. So now you can see that you can give someone permission on all your external modules or selected external modules. So if you don't want someone to see the revision, just uncheck the box. It's going to be unchecked by default, I think, uh, unless it's part of the project creation. But if you add it afterwards, then uh, they won't have that uh, box checked by default. So you probably have to go in and check it. One of the two, but uh, since we just did it, we'll have to play around with it a little bit. But that's how you would keep somebody from seeing the data dictionary revision. Yeah. But I really, really like this. This is going to be very helpful to us. And, and keep, anybody that's administering a project. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, and keep in mind that uh, it's only for projects that are in production. That's that's one of the unfortunate things. It would be nice if it could be any uh, revision. So maybe, maybe that's something they'll, they'll come up with down the road. Um, but, it, I mean, it... There's nothing to say you can't move your project to production just to, you know, be able to use this, um, <clears throat> as long as you know how to change well, things. And the problem with it being in in uh, in development would be you capture every single change that you made, and you need something to trigger this, which yeah. is why it only works in production. Yeah. So it's that action of approving it that captures this, and plus they must be putting this in the table in REDCap, and it would just create a huge mess, I yeah. think, ultimately, if they captured. So this works really, I, I just like how this is set up, this is great. Mm -hmm. 
No, I'm glad you got on this. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be useful. Very so. So that's all I have. If anybody has any questions or wants me to go through anything, uh, uh, feel free to let me know. All right. If nobody has any questions or comments or whatever, then uh, we'll probably just go ahead and shut down early again. So um, one last call for questions. Nope. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, it's This has been really a good session, so um, I look forward to seeing you back again next week.